Imagine being at sea for weeks on end. The supply of food and water is running out. There's no hitting up an Arby's or a Long John Silver's drive through And pulling into a major port to restock isn't an option because pirate ships are not welcome. How did pirates survive? Well, let's bite into this. And this. Max Miller from Tasting History is going to demonstrate a buccaneer-inspired recipe. Cooey. I'm Joel Cook, and this is Rogue History. I tend to get a little hangry after not having an afternoon snack. So I can't imagine how hangry pirates got on a trans-oceanic journey with very few stops along the way. The first few weeks at sea were great, while their vessel was stocked with perishables. Cheese, vegetables, and meat. Real hearty feasts compared to what would come next. After several weeks, those perishables would have run out or gone rotten, and the crew would be forced to turn in their supply of dried foods. Beans, salted meat, hardtack biscuits. Pirates also kept a limited supply of livestock aboard. The one thing that pirates wanted more than anything else was fresh food, as you can imagine. And so even pirate ships would commonly have uh, livestock on board. You would have poultry that would be put in coops on the quarter deck. You could typically have pigs or goats that would have free reign wandering on the decks. Sometimes you'd have sheep. One account uh, a sailor recalled, yesterday our captain brought three Spanish hogs. The roughness of the weather made them so seasick that no man could forbear laughing to see them go reeling and spewing about the decks. They would also hunt for fresh meat, such as wild pigs, when they went ashore. We know from accounts written by 18th century privateers that these crews relied on the hunting and trading skills of indigenous and African descended people in order to eat. They often took captives to secure provisions for them, since they knew how to communicate in local languages, fish, hunt, forage, and prepare edible items. In fact, the name buccaneer came from indigenous people in the Caribbean. Buccan, or buchan, is the native South American and Caribbean name for a wooden framework or hurdle on which meat was slow roasted or smoked over a fire. And this was a, a method, a technique that they learned from the Taino uh, and other sources. So the indigenous groups on these islands for sure. And it's quite a tragic story for me too, or a terrible story. It's so typical of like this colonial process that's happening. And this is the exact period when the native peoples on these islands were actually killed by disease and uh, enslavement. At the same time, they're giving, they're passing on their techniques of surviving and sustaining themselves to these pirates. It's possible or even likely that these crews wouldn't have been able to survive without this knowledge. But did native people give this information freely? I got to speak to uh, one indigenous person who had traveled a lot and who had actually written down memories of his people. And um, he actually said, well, yes, we cooperated with pirates. We, we cooperated with anybody who seemed beneficial to our goals. So it's much more complex, usually different groups that would act in different ways and have different lines of conflict. Much more so than buried treasure, the pirate focus was so often on food. In Villains of All Nations, Marcus Rediger talked about how sailors would try to trade for fresh provisions whenever possible. If given the opportunity, they would trade things like bells and knives for sheep and potatoes. Other local provisions that they traded for or took included fresh water, fish, fowl, and turtles. So the favorite food of pirates were always turtles. The meat was soft, which is really useful at a time period where people's teeth were terrible. They were easy to catch, of course, because they were slow and they were plentiful on islands in the Caribbean or in the Galapagos. They're also really easy to transport across long distances. So if you were going across the Pacific, it was common to go to the Galapagos, grab a bunch of tortoises, and you could flip them on their backs, uh, which meant they wouldn't wander around the decks the way other sort of livestock animals would. And one problem with eating turtles is it also makes you defecate black and urinate green. And pirates noted this on a number of occasions. As you can imagine, they often didn't have fresh fruit, which means they often didn't get their fill of vitamin C, which means scurvy. You've probably seen the most notorious symptom of scurvy in TV and movies. Hello? My teeth keep falling out. Scurvy led to muscle weakness, swollen and bleeding gums, loss of teeth, and bleeding under the skin. Not to mention tiredness and depression. So to avoid the dreaded scurvy, they would seek out these citrus fruits whenever they could go ashore. You found the oranges? Ah, no. Bad luck on that front, I'm afraid. With a little storytelling magic, Steed and his crew eventually find oranges. Right, oranges. 
But what happened when the fresh food ran out or went bad while at sea? Unfortunately, sickness and death. One 18th century crew ran into a crisis after traveling through warm climates. Quote, their penguins began to corrupt, as one account put it, and there bred in them a most loathsome and ugly worm of an inch long. The discovery of the worms came too late for some of the crew, who had already eaten the penguin. Keep in mind, the crews were often in worse shape than the ships. Poor diet, harsh discipline, exposure to heat. Then the rationings became even more extreme. Now they're living on a bigger portion of dried biscuits, dried beans, salted beef. And of course, the tensions would increase as, the, uh, as they got long into their voyage. Those entrees certainly weren't for the weak. Maybe the drinks were a little better? There's a phrase called rats and bats. <laughs> and there were literally rats in, on their, in their drinking water. They would have slime in their water, but beer, wine, and especially rum, that lasted a lot longer than water. And so, of course, rum was their savior. <laughs> and a bottle of rum. <laughs> so pirates really did love rum as much as pop culture makes it seem. But what happened when they really couldn't get their hands on anything to eat or drink? Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. In dire straits, pirates were ready to eat anything, including leather. After being stranded, crew members serving under Henry Morgan were forced to eat leather satchels by soaking them in water and then cooking them over a fire. Max Miller from Tasting History is going to demonstrate a similar method to make leather edible. So first, I cut up a few pieces of the leather and then soaked them in water for about a half an hour. Then I took them out and pounded them for a good 10 minutes with a mortar and pestle. And then I repeated this five or six times. So after about 30 minutes of boiling, I took the leather out and hoped it was edible. And here we are, some leather. I have to say, it looks pretty horrible. It's kind of translucent, um, obviously very, uh, very soft and wiggly like a worm or you know what, it kind of reminds me actually of the jellyfish tentacles from, from a couple months ago. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do this. How big of a piece? And I'm, I'm curious if I can get it off with my teeth. If you're my dentist, don't watch this. Actually, really quite soft, but chewy. Okay, so the flavor is none. There is like no flavor whatsoever. Uh, you could smell it kind of like it smelled like leather. The texture, like I said, softer than I thought it would be, but it kind of, it's, it's spongy, but firm. And so now it's all in my teeth. It's gonna take me a long time to get it out. And I just had a piece this big. I don't think I could eat much more. As Alexander Exquimelin put it, he who objects to eat this stuff never knew hunger as the buccaneers knew it. And oftentimes, lack of food would lead to mutiny on board sailing vessels and lead some crews to actually rebel against their captain. And there was an old dark joke that if the captain was to sentence them to hanging for mutiny, the weight of their starving bodies wouldn't be enough to kill them. So on the surface, the answer is, pirates ate and drank whatever they could in order to survive. But by looking a bit below the surface, under the sea if you will, it's likely that pirate activity affected people's sense of identity through food, for both the crews and the local populations that they relied on. I hope this has given you a lot to chew on. Till next time. Special thanks to Max Miller for cooking and eating leather in the name of research. Don't forget to check out the full episode of Tasting History, where he dives even deeper into the history of this technique. Ye mariners all, as ye pass by, come in and drink if you are dry. Come spend my lads your money brisk, and pop your nose in a jug of this.